Hello everyone, it's the online lecture again. Today we will talk about um, membrane structure and functions. So, have you ever thought about why we need a cell membrane? The reason is that inside the cell we have different uh, organelles. We talked about this in the previous uh, online lecture about cell structure and function. With all the cell organelles inside the cell, they are performing intricate, delicate process, chemical process, to keep the cell alive. A cell membrane, the function of cell membrane is to separate the internal environment with the external environment. Why? Because the external environment changes all the time. But we need to have a constant and stable internal environment so that the cell um, can 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 carry out different um, chemical reactions such as the cellular respiration that we will talk about in the next few lectures. Not only the cell membrane is to separate the internal and external environment, it also controls the whatever molecule going in and out of the cell. This is important. The reason is that if anything can go into the cell then the cell will die pretty quickly. Why? If anything can go into the cell, that means even the bacteria or, 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 or viruses, they can go into the cell to infect the cell, then the cell can become very unhealthy. Most importantly, we talk about the term homeostasis in our first, very first lecture. Homeostasis, um, as, a, as a review, it says, is the maintaining of a steady internal environment of our body. So what, when we are healthy, then our body maintains homeostasis. When homeostasis is not maintained, what will happen to our body? We will get sick, or we can even die. That's why um, in the physiology class, uh, we talk about, we emphasize a lot about homeostasis. Uh, we, because in physiology class, we learn about the um, healthy and normal functioning of our body. But after you finish taking physiology class, when you go to, let's say, nursing school or, or other uh, healthcare professional school, they will teach you pathology. Pathology is when your body does not maintain homeostasis, meaning that when the physiology is not right, then what will happen to your uh, body? Plasma membrane, if you remember um, what I told you, it is also known as a cell membrane. They are the same term. And it is made of a phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid bilayer, as I mentioned before, it has both the hydrophilic polar head and hydrophobic uh, polar tails. Just as a reveal, let me draw the picture to you again. So this is the fossil head. And it has two negative charges. Hydrophobic tails. Um, we call it a fatty acid chain. So this part is hydrophilic. And this part is hydrophobic. And we call it phospholipid bilayer. Bi means two. Why is that? Because we have two of these uh, molecule. As I previously told you before, hydro means water, phoenix means love. 
So it is literally means water loving. The fourth way group is hydrophilic or polar. The reason is that it carries two minus charge. It is a, it has a charge. And water, as we know that when water dissociates, it also carry charges. Because of that, it uh, the two minus fourth way group love water. And it faces either inside or outside the cell. Why? Because outside the cell, we call it extracellular matrix. Um, it contains mainly water. Inside the cell, it is um, the cytoplasm. And cytoplasm consists of mainly water as well. For hydrophobic, the water fear, phobic, you know, it's like phobia. So uh, it is this fatty acid chain. Why is it hydrophobic? Why is it non-polar? Because the fatty acid chain here, no matter whether it is saturated or non-saturated. Okay, this is from uh, the lecture. Do you still remember the differences between saturated and non-saturated? Saturated uh, a fatty acid chain is the fatty acid chain that does not contain C double bond C. On the other hand, this, uh, the non-saturated non-saturated fatty acid chain, it contains a C double bond C. That means the fatty acid chain will bend. So it doesn't matter whether it's saturated or, or unsaturated or unsaturated. This two fatty acid chain they mostly mostly contain hydrogen and carbon. Because most of then they are hydrogen carbon, it, there's no charges and there's no uh, uh, unequal sharing of the electron, meaning that the electronegativity is relatively uh, evenly distributed. So the fatty acid chain is made mostly a non-polar. Because they are non-polar, just like fat and oil, they cannot dissolve in water. So what do they do? They just fold inside, that means the Two fatty acid, the four fatty acid chain here, they face each other, so that they will be facing away from the extracellular fluid, which is mainly water, and the cytoplasm, also mainly water. And in this phospholipid bilayer, the cell membrane. So the cell membrane has many, many of these uh, phospho, uh, phospholipid group to form the cell membrane. In the cell membrane here, we have something like a cholesterol. The cholesterol is actually inserted in the phospholipid bilayer to control whether or not the membrane is uh, fluid, you can call it soft, or if it's uh, rigid, you can call it hard. And other than cholesterol, what do we have in the cell membrane? We have proteins. We have peripheral proteins and integral proteins. The difference is that peripheral protein attaches on the surface of the of one side of the cell membrane. It can be on the outside, on the outside of the cell, or it can be inside of the cell. But the integral protein, on the other hand, it actually inserted in the membrane. Meaning that if the cell membrane is like this, it is actually inserted like this, all the way. Because the four solid bilayer, they are fluid, that means they are just, it is like a gel, gelatinous layer. So the molecule that is being inserted, let's say the integral protein or the cholesterol that we previously mentioned, all these, they can actually move inside the cell membrane. They can move within the cell membrane, not inside, within the cell membrane. Both, both of these, they can attach to a car 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 carbohydrate chain. What does it mean? We have, a, we have two types, glycolipids and glycoprotein. Glyco, basically, it means glycogen. Glycogen, as we 
Learn about this, it is a long chain of glucose joined together. So glycolipids, meaning that they are the they are lipids that attach uh, to carbohydrate and glycoprotein, they are protein attached to carbohydrate. How does it look like? So it looks like something like this. So this will be glycoprotein. Glycolipid will be the one that attached to the phospho phospholipid bilayer. It literally look like a, an antenna or a, or a branch. The reason is that do we have a picture? Yes, we have pictures here. That's good. So what happened is here. You see that. So this is the phospholipid bilayer. First of all, as you can see that they form the cell membrane, and then uh, we have the hydrophilic head, the the blue purple ball. And then we have the, well, the blue ball, you can call it. Uh, and then the, the uh, hydrophilic cells in here. And then we have the integral protein here. So you can see that it goes through the entire cell membrane. And we have the peripheral protein here. They basically, they're just attached to the surface of the cell membrane. It can, of course, attach to the integral uh, protein. But they uh, just attach on the surface of the membrane, either extracellularly or intracellularly. And these purple molecules here, these are the cholesterol. And as you can see, that these, these are hexagon chain. Remember, glucose is a hexose, hexo meaning that it forms a hexagon ring. And all these glucose, they are joined together. As you can see, that they look like an antenna or branches. For the glycogen, glycogen, remember a chain of glucose that attach to the protein. No matter it is integral protein or peripheral protein, we call them glycoprotein. For those who attach to, um, let me see, for those who attach to, uh, do you have glycolipid here? Oh yeah, here. For those who attach to the phosphate group, of the phospholipid, we call them glycolipid because they attach to the phospholipid. So this is what we talk about. And then inside the cell, or in the cytoplasm, we have these filaments, the cytoskeleton, attached to the inside of the uh, cell membrane. Well, the cytoskeleton is to maintain the shape of the cell and also it helps the uh, movement of the organelles inside the cell and also it helps the transportation of vesicles inside the cell. And then we have something called channel protein. Why? We talk about we have a peripheral protein and integral protein. So what, what are the functions? So the first one is the channel proteins. Channel proteins, they allow um, Ions, mainly they allow ions to go through the cell membrane because we found a lot of channel proteins in the nervous system, in the nerve cell, we call it neuron. So the ion, what type of ion will go through a channel protein? For example, sodium ion or potassium ion. These ions, they will go through the channel protein to go either going into the cell or out of the cell. You will learn more about this in uh, when we talk about nervous system and also when we take anatomy and physiology. We will go into uh, great details about that. So the substances here, uh, many of them they are, they are uh, ions. And some of the channel protein, they actually have gate, meaning that it's not like, okay, the ion can freely go through, they can close. Uh, for sodium channel, they actually have a, they have three states, open, close, and inactivate. So these three states, they um, circulate, they cycle through these three states. But for potassium channel, they only have two states, 
open and close. Carrier protein, carrier protein, they are very, very similar to channels. They also, of course, will have movement of the molecule of the sodium. But what kind of sodium it, it carry out? Maybe it is the, um, uh, the charged molecule or bigger molecule. Um, some larger protein molecule or larger bigger molecule. We will give you some example in, in the next few slices. The next few slides. And then cell recognition protein. Cell recognition protein, they are mainly the glycoprotein on the surface of the cell. Remember those antenna or branches like uh, attachment on the either the uh, integral protein or the, uh, the peripheral protein. So an example of this is that uh, for the immune system, uh, for our cells, on the surface of our cell, we have a specific glycoprotein that tells the white blood cell that, okay, um, this cell belongs to our body. So the glycoprotein is like your passport or your uh, driver license. It's like your ID card, student ID card. So it tells the cops that, okay, the cops that means the white blood cell, that you are the, uh, 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 the student of West LA College. For those who don't have the uh, student ID card or the glycoprotein, or they have a, most of them have different student ID card. If they have different student ID card, then the cop can tell that, okay, these, they are the student from different college. They are not from West LA College. Similarly, the white blood cell use the glycoprotein as the ID card to tell whether or not, okay, this cell is from our body, but this cell is not from our body. For the cell that is that are not from our body, what will happen? The white blood cell will kill them. Another example is that uh, the blood type. Uh, we have a, blood type A, blood type B, blood type O, and blood type AB. The reason we have different blood type because of on the surface of the uh, red blood cell, we have different types of glycoprotein. For blood type A, they have glycoprotein A. For blood type B, they have glycoprotein B. For blood type AB, they have glycoprotein A and glycoprotein B co-expressed on the surface of the red blood cell. For blood type O, guess what? On the surface of the red blood cell, they do not have any glycoprotein A or glycoprotein B. That's how they have blood type O. We'll talk more about this when we talk about um, genetics. Yeah. Receptor proteins. Receptor proteins, they, they have a specific shape to fit a specific molecule. It's like lock and key. It's very, they find it very similar to enzyme. Um, they can, the receptor, one of the examples is the uh, hormone. Yes, hormone receptor. Hormone receptor, um, hormone, we have two types of hormone, as I mentioned before, protein hormone and lipid hormone. In this case, because we're talking about membrane protein, so this receptor protein, they, they, will, um, they have a specific shape to fit the protein hormone. Because lipid hormone, they can go through the cell membrane to go into the cytoplasm. So the receptor for the lipid hormone, they are inside the cell in the cytoplasm, or they may be even inside the nucleus, in the nucleoplasm. So the um, receptor protein, yeah, this one is uh, an example, it's a protein hormone. When the whole protein hormone binds to the receptor protein on the cell membrane, what will happen? Then the cell membrane, this receptor hormone protein, will trigger a cascade of a, a molecule reaction. Uh, the molecule reaction can be something called cyclic AMP signaling cascade, or it can be a phospholipase uh, C, phospholipase C, uh, IP3 DAG cascade. Uh, if you are taking a, a, a Physiology, we'll go through that as well. Enzymatic protein. Yes, 
the membrane protein, the, that means the protein that is either the integral protein embedded in the membrane or the, the protein that's on the surface, they can be enzyme. That means they can speed up the reaction of the chemical reactions. Or uh, an example is that there's a protein called ATP synthase. ATP synthase. ATP synthase, we'll learn more about this when we talk about cellular respiration. It is like the last, the very, very last step of the cellular respiration to make the ATP. So let me give you the name ATP synthase. So Whenever you see the word ASE at the end, it means enzyme. Syn means synthesis or making. ATP. We talk about ATP on Wednesday night. Yeah, we talk about ATP on Wednesday night. So the name of this already tells you the function. What does it mean? ATP synthase is an enzyme that makes ATP. So that's the function of ATP synthase. You don't even need to memorize it because the name already tells you what it does. Now we go into a little bit details to the uh, five types of membrane protein we just talked about. As a matter of fact, we talk about we briefly go through the uh, membrane protein on Wednesday lecture when we talk about the function of protein, remember we have a list of functions of protein. And one and the very first function of the protein we talked about on Wednesday night was the membrane protein. And then I have a brief list of these five uh, membrane protein function. So as you can see that it is a channel. A channel, you can assume that it is like a pore that uh, allow the um, molecule to go through, going between in and out of the uh, uh, um, cell membrane. But the thing about channels is that they, they are usually one direction. I mean, it's either allowing a molecule to go in or allowing the molecule to go out. Very rare, uh, we have, uh, there is a channel that we'll talk about, it's called aquaporin. We'll talk about um, at the end of this lecture. It allows a water molecule to go, um, to go inside or outside, it's a bi-directional uh, channel. We'll talk about that later. But most of the channels we, we, we study, they are uh, one direction. And uh, as I mentioned before, it, they are, uh, the most common one that we will talk about, they are the sodium channel and potassium channel. Why? Because sodium ion and potassium ion, they are charged. When they are charged, they are hydrophilic. When they are hydrophilic, they cannot go through the hydrophobic tails in here. When they cannot go through the hydrophobic tails in here, then they need to have a so-called channel. They need someone to help them to go through it. In this case, they can go through this uh, integral protein channel, channel protein. When they go through this channel protein, then they can avoid the hydrophobic tail. And that's why we need the channel protein. Uh, so it gives you an example of cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis, because it has a defect of the, a channel called chloride channel. Yes, other than sodium and potassium channel, we have chloride channel. Uh, when chloride ch channel is malfunctioned, that means, that means chloride ion cannot go through the channel from inside the cell to outside the cell. Then what will happen? The thick mucus will build up in a different part of our body. And this is the, what we call cystic fibrosis. And then we talk about carrier channel. Car uh, carrier protein, not carrier channel, sorry. Carrier protein, they um, take the molecule to bring the molecule inside or outside of the cell. For example, you give you an example of glucose. Glucose, um, normally we want to absorb glucose. Why? Because glucose is a monosaccharide and our brain can only digest glucose and most importantly we need glucose to 
make ATP in the cellular respiration. So after we eat our food, let's say after we finish eating rice, then uh, our body will break down rice, the starch in the rice into a glucose, and then our body will absorb the glucose. Then you may ask, how does our body, how does our intestine absorb the glucose? By carrier protein. So what happens is that if this is the lumen or the gut, then this is the glucose molecule uh, being broken down from starch, I mean from rice, then how does our intestine absorb this glucose molecule going through this uh, carrier protein. So the carrier protein will take in the glucose molecule so that the glucose molecule can go inside our cell. As soon as the glucose molecule goes inside our cell, then we call it absorption. It is already absorbed inside our body. How come glucose cannot go through the phospholipid bilayer? Remember that glucose is a hexo, it's a hexagon ring. And if you remember our uh, organ, organic molecule lecture, we, the first macromolecule we thought was carbohydrate. I also show you the structure of glucose. As you can, if, I hope you still remember. If not, you are welcome to open your notes again to take a look at the structure of glucose. Structure of glue is basically hydrocarbon with oxygen atom, meaning that it's mainly composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. In other words, glucose molecules, they are not carrying any charges, and the electronegativity is uh, evenly distributed. But how come glucose cannot go through the... Um, so in other words, theoretically, glucose should be non-polar. How come it cannot go through the... Uh, hydrophobic tail, the phospholipid bilayer. The main reason is that glucose is too big. Yes, size matters. Remember, to study biology, there are many, many examples that size matter. This is like the first one you learn, size matter. Because it is too big, it cannot squeeze through. It cannot squeeze through the phospholipid bilayer. That's why it needs help. The help is the carrier protein. The carrier protein will help the gigantic glucose molecule to go through this uh, phospholipid bilayer, even though glucose is non-polar. Now, cell recognition protein. As I mentioned before, many of them they are called glycoprotein. I already told you that um, it is like your student ID card, so that the campus police can tell them, okay, you are the West LA college student. In here, we give you a specific name, Specific example is called major histocompatibility complex, MHC. So this is the so-called student ID card of your body cell. Yes. If your body cell has this MHC, then the white blood cell can tell that okay, you are belong to your body. If you, if your MHC looks different, looks doesn't like this, maybe different types, different shape different shape, different conformation, different structure of the uh, gly glycogen, different branching, then the, your white blood cell can tell them, okay, you do not belong to our body, then I will kill you. Receptor protein. As I mentioned before, uh, receptor protein, one of the examples is the uh, protein hormone. So, in other words, this one will be the protein hormone. The hormone is secreted by either by your brain, hypothalamus, specifically hypothalamus. or your um, pituitary gland <laughs> and the purpose of the hormone is that as you can see that uh, hypothalamus in our brain is here 
pituitary gland is also uh, located right at the bottom of our brain. So everything is in our head, but then um, the function of the hormone is to uh, is a signaling molecule. It tells your body um, to change. For example, when you when we grow tall, it is because of the hormone that's secreted um, in our head to tell the body to grow. Um, how do we grow? Remember, I told you two methods in the first uh, lecture. Do you still remember? What are the two ways we grow? One way is to increase the number of cells. The other way is to increase the size of the cell. So, the hormone will tell our body to do these two things to grow. But as you can tell, the hormone is from here. But our body is some, something like far away from the head. How does it work? So the hormone will go into bloodstream, go into our blood vessels, and travel by blood. And then as it reaches to, let's say, our muscle cell, our muscle cell will have this kind of receptor here on the, on the, mem on the, on the, on the membrane, on the plasma membrane of the muscle cell. And then as soon as, uh, and then when the protein hormone binds to this receptor protein, then you tell the muscle cell to, let's say, increase the size. Then you will become, your muscle will get big, and you look very uh, 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 muscular. And it gives you another example, dwarfism. Dwarfism is because our body does not, our body meaning our, our head, the brain or the pituitary gland, does not produce enough growth hormone. It's not because of that, but it is because of the uh, receptor protein, receptor protein that specifically for the growth hormone, they are they, they have something wrong. This thing is this part. This part is malfunction. This part is malfunction. That means the receptor cannot um, bind to the hormone. When the receptor cannot bind to the hormone, that means the downstream Let's say the cyclic AMP class cascade cannot put, con, cannot start. When the cyclic AMP signaling cascade cannot start, what will happen? Um, then we will not have changes in our body, in, in our cells. And the last one we talk about is the enzyme. Enzyme. We talk about the ATP synthase here. ATP synthase here. And another example is the. Cholera bacteria. Cholera bacteria is said that you release a toxin that uh, uh, interfere with something called adenylate cyclase. So I gave you an example of the ATP synthase, which we will cover in the later lecture, cellular respiration. Here, it gives you another example. It is called adenylate cyclase. As you can see, that adenylate cyclase, ASE, or it is also an enzyme. So this adenylate cyclase, I can tell you that it is in the something that I call cyclic AMP signaling class K. So what it does is that this adenylate cyclase is an enzyme. What it does, it converts ATP into cyclic AMP. C stands for cyclic. That means there's a loop in the AMP. So we talk about ATP on Wednesday night. If ATP loose or, or it breaks, or if the one of the four straight bond was uh, is broken, then will become you will become ADP. Because it will have two phosphate groups. But if we break it even more, we will have um, 
AMP, cyclic AMP, and the cyclic AMP can become a regular AMP. So this is the steps here. Let me put it better here. Sorry for me to change it. This will be A B P. So at the end of the cycle, you will um, put a loop in the cyclic AMP to make the cyclic AMP such a loop, and then eventually the loop will be broken to make AMP. So this is what it does for the cyclic attenuate cyclase, and it is important because cyclic AMP, this one, we call it a second messenger. What cyclic AMP does is that it will um, activate something we call it downstream molecule. The downstream molecule in the cell will continue to activate uh, more molecule. As you can see, it is an amplification process in order to bring changes to the cell. When our cell is able to change because of this amplification downstream process, what will happen? When the cell change, our tissue change. When our tissue change, what will happen? Our organ will change. When our organ change, what will happen? The entire organ system will change. When the entire organ system change, what will happen? Our entire body will change. So that's what uh, we meant by, um, it's like how our hormone, let's say the hormone, bring changes to our body. Now let's talk about the permeability of the plasma membrane. Um, our plasma membrane is selectively permeable. Why is that? We again, we back to the, our basic structure of the cell membrane. It is a phospholipid bilayer. It allows only the hydrophobic molecule or the non-polar molecule to go through, but hydrophilic or polar molecule, they cannot go through this membrane. That's why we call it selectively permeable. Selectively permeable membrane, there's an, another name, is called semi-permeable. So either semi-permeable or selectively permeable. And here, it tells you that, are we telling you the polarity or charges? It tells you whether or not the molecule can go through. It also tells you another very important uh, criteria, remember, size, size matters in biology, size matters. What molecule is too big to go through the cell membrane? We just talked about this, remember which one? Yes, it is glucose. Glucose is too, too big to go through the cell membrane, even though it is uh, non-polar. And that's why what kind of membrane protein it requires to uh, go through the cell membrane. What types of membrane protein glucose need in order to go through the cell membrane? We just talked about this. Feel free to uh, go back to your lecture notes to take a look. And the answer is carrier protein. Thank you. Now, what molecule can go through? Small uncharged molecule can also go through the membrane. But you may say that, hey, but they are uncharged. That means they are non-polar, right? Yes, but the small molecule we talk about, they are like oxygen and carbon dioxide, they are gas. They are gas, so they are so, so, so small that they can actually go through. Also, our favorite friend, alcohol. Yes, you guys who may, may be uh, having fun in this weekend while I'm giving this lecture. <laughs> okay, alcohol, they are, they are also small enough to go through, but actually alcohol, they have an OH group, the hydroxyl group. Remember I told you about there's a different R group in the uh, functional group of the amino acid. One of them is a hydroxyl group. This hydroxyl group uh, is actually polar. Yeah. They can also be, they, they're actually polar. Let me 
control the structure of the alcohol so that when you drink, you, at least you know what you are drinking. Uh, let's do it this way. Okay, this is your favorite molecule. Uh, alcohol. Okay, alcohol. So, the reason why I say it is uh, relatively polar because in here, the oxygen is a lot bigger than hydrogen, so the oxygen is slightly negative. But the hydrogen here will be slightly positive. And it has this hydrocarbon chain here. Original hydrocarbon chain, because they only have hydrogen and carbon, they are, the charges, they are equally distributed. But, because it is so short, it really is short, so that makes alcohol molecule relatively polar here. Because it is relatively polar, um, oh, I'm sorry, it can, we call it uncharged molecule. Because it is relatively polar, we call it uncharged molecule. And the molecule is very small and it contains this uh, hydrophob uh, hydrophobic tail uh, here. Because of this, even though it is slightly charged, um, this part this part is mainly um, hydrophobic. This part is hydrophilic. Because the work is so small, it can still go through the cell membrane. Glycerol, glycerol, remember where we see this molecule, glycerol? The structure of glycerol uh, looks like this. This is uh, glycerol. As you can see, the glycerol also has a OH group here. So they are all slightly negative, slightly positive here. But it has this um, hydrocarbon chain here. That makes it hydrophobic here. But this part, it is hydrophilic. Again, similar reason with the alcohol. Glycerol is a very small molecule. Uh, it's, that's why it can go through the cell membrane. But where do you see glycerol molecule? Yes, you, we see glycerol molecule in lipids. It is one of the uh, molecules that make up uh, uh, triacylglycerol. Triacylglycerol. 